Let's solve this differential equation. We have y triple prime plus 3y double prime plus 3y plus y equals 2e to the negative t. Now, this is a non-homogeneous equation, right? We have this 2e to the negative t on the right-hand side. Okay, so in this video, I'm going to solve it in two different ways. I'm going to solve it with the undetermined coefficient method. Then we're going to start all over again and solve it with the variation of parameters method. First up, undetermined coefficient method. And to get started, I'm going to work on the homogeneous solution first. That means we're going to take the left-hand side of the OD. We're going to set it equal to 0. From that, we're going to extract our characteristic equation. I'm going to go ahead and group the first and last terms, the r cubed plus 1, and that will, me allow, that will allow me to use the a cubed plus b cubed algebraic expansion. And factoring, simplifying will allow me to get to a form which is much easier to solve. And I'm able to find all three of our roots, r1, r2, and r3. As we can see, they are equal to negative 1. Now, from uh, homogeneous equations, we know when we arrive to uh, our roots, we, there's uh, three possibilities. We're able to get real and distinct roots. We're able to get real and repeating roots or complex conjugate roots. In our case, we arrive to the real and repeating scenario. All three of our roots are real and repeating. Therefore, our solutions will have the following forms. y1 equals to e to the negative 1 t. Okay, the, in front of the t, that's where the 1 went. Now, let's see, our y2 will have the same buildup because we are using real repeating uh, formula to write up our solutions, right? But we need to remember that we can't leave it like this because the rule says we do not want our solutions to repeat. Therefore, we need to put a t in front of the e negative t. There you go. Now we have first and second solutions. Let's work on the third one. It's going to have the same setup, but again, we are running into repeating scenario. And we need to make sure we're going to add another t. But this one looks at the second term, a second uh, solution. So we can't use that either. All we have to do is add yet another t. And our third solution is t squared e to the negative t. Now we can go ahead, write up our homogeneous solution to the problem, which will be the three uh, solutions that we just found summed up with a constant in front of them c1, c2, and c3, respectively. Next step, let's find our particular solution for this ODE. On the left-hand side of the screen, you guys can see I'm everything that we have found so far. I'm just going to put it aside over there, and we can still see it and reference it as we go along. Okay, for the undetermined coefficient method, the uh, next steps require us to take a guess of what kind of solutions are we going to have. For the undetermined coefficient method, they give us formulas what to guess. And there's three possibilities where this scenario could work. For polynomials, exponentials, and sinusoids. If we look at our ODE, on the right-hand side for us, we have 2e to the negative t. This is an exponential, and that's where we will be guessing this setup, yp equals ae to negative t. If you don't know where it comes from, make sure you check it in your textbook. All differential equations have a nice table or some kind of formulas where they write it down. What do you need to guess? Polynomial, exponentials, and sinusoids. So, our guess, a which is just a constant, times e to the negative t. Now, the next rule is that we need to make sure that our guess will not be another repeat.
repeat of the solutions that we have found in our homogeneous setups. Okay, and if we see we have a constant times e to the negative t is exactly the same thing as our first solution, which is a constant times e to the negative t. Therefore, we are not allowed to use it. We need to add a t to it. But now we run into the problem. It looks like our second solution. So we can't use that either. We need to add another t. And yet again, now it looks like the third solution. So we can't use that either. No problem. We'll just add another t. And there you go. yp equals a to the t to the third power e to the negative t. Finally, this is our official guess of how our particular solution will be. Okay, so why did we have to guess? The goal is that we need to take this and plug it back into our ODE. But as we can see, we have a y, then we have y prime, then we have y double prime, then we have y triple prime. So all we have so far is y. So let's go ahead and find the, uh, the correct derivative for it, which is the first one. Here's the first derivative. Here's the second derivative. And here's the third derivative. Over and over, I'm using the product rule and a bunch of simplifications, and I'm able to get to the simplified forms of these, which I will be using to go ahead and plug it back into our ODE. And here it is. This is what you see, our ODE, the original one, this one, but everything we have found here, just simply plug into it. So y triple prime is this whole thing right here, plus three times y double prime, this one, plus three times y single prime, then plus y equals 2e to the negative t. The right hand side doesn't change at all. It is what it is. Now factor out e to the negative t and inside the parentheses we are able to see that a lot of things will simply simplify out. All we have left is e to the negative t and inside the parentheses 6a equals to 2e negative t. e to the negative t simplifies out and from here, we are able to find that our a is one third. Now let's go back to our original guess and we can update it. Now a is not an unknown. We figure it out. It's uh, simply one third. Let's plug it in. And there it is. Our yp, one third t to the third e negative t. All there is left. Let's write up our final solution to this problem, which is yt equals the homogeneous part plus the particular part. We can plug in everything that we have found here, homogeneous part right here, particular pro part right here. And we can say that there it is. We were able to find the solution to our ODE. Now, Undetermined coefficient method done. Very good. Now, as we said, we're going to start all over again and solve the same problem, but this time with the variation of parameters method. First up, variation of parameters method which will start the exact same way as the other one. We're going to work on the homogeneous solution. Now, if this slide looks familiar, it is because I it's the exact same one as I used for the undetermined coefficient method. The homogeneous part, exactly the same. No difference, nothing changes. We are arriving to the same three roots, R1, R2, and R3, equals to negative one. Now, put those aside, and let's see. The particular solution is next. For that, we need gonna have to uh, work on our wrong skin, which is a determinant, right? We're gonna need uh, the three uh, solutions from the homogeneous part that we have found earlier, e to the negative t, 
our y1, t e to the negative t our y2, and t squared e negative t our y3. Now, for the first line of uh, our determinant, we're going to put these three solutions. The second line, we're going to take the, the first derivative of these solutions. And the second line, I mean the third line, it will be the second derivative of those solutions respectively. So, regular solution, first derivative, second derivative. Okay, now we have a 3 by 3 determinant. We're going to have to solve it. But first, let's do a little simplification because this looks pretty nasty. Move it up a bit and let's see. We These forms, the, I mean these terms, we're going to leave it as is. But the other, uh, other four terms, I'm going to simplify e to the negative t out. Because every single term, as we can see, has one. So. This will help us make it a bit cleaner. Move those up a bit so we have room. Now, as again, we can see that we have an e to negative t in every single term of this determinant. So from the first line, this first line from here, I factored out 1 e to the t. From the second line, I factor out another e to the t. From the third line, I factor out another e to the t. And inside the matrix, a matrix, sorry, inside the determinant, make sure you don't confuse it. This is a determinant, not a matrix, okay? So this is what we have inside. And to solve it, a 3 by 3 determinant, that will be uh, pretty interesting to solve but we can do it we can do it so we're going to take the first two columns and write it on the right hand side then we're going to have to multiply these up and sum them up then multiply these up and subtract them and here it is e to the negative 3t that's just these three guys and inside the parentheses we can see everything that i just described the summing and multiplication and uh, subtractions, okay? And after you clean up that long mess over there, we can see that our brown skin looks a lot nicer, which is 2e to the negative 3t. Put that aside. Next step, find our w1, w2, and w3. Again, we are working with determinants. We're going to take our brown skin, but we're going to replace the first column with 0, 0, 1. The other two columns will stay as they were, unchanged. We're going to expand it out based on the first column. And make sure you remember that when you expand things out, there's a term of a negative 1 to the power ij that will multiply each uh, term that you're working with, this one, this one, and this one. You'll see as we go along that this uh, can cause errors where a negative can be forgotten fairly easily. Okay, and we have a 2 by 2 determinant, much easier to solve, and we can find our w1 to be t squared e to the negative 2t. Put that aside, w2, exact same process, but we're going to replace our second column with 0, 0, 1. The other two stay the same. There it is. Expand it out based on that column now. And we can see, again, make sure you don't forget this negative 1 multiplier. Here it would cause headaches because otherwise you would write a positive value. But you need a negative one. Okay, So make sure that's not forgotten. Again, 2 by 2 determinant, much easier to solve. We have our W2, negative 2t e to the negative 2t. And W3, our third determinant, same process again, but we are replacing the third column. The other two stay the same. Go ahead and expand it, and we're able to find that our W3 is equal to e to the negative 2t. Now, 
let's work on finding our y p. We're going to be following this formula right here, which is our first homogeneous solution times the integral of w1 times gt divided by w. Now, this gt is this guy right here, our right hand uh, of the ODE. The 2e to the negative t is our gt. These two terms are follow the exact same setup, but with the second and third solutions respectively. Okay, let's plug in. We know all the variables that we see here, so we can plug them in. We can see this looks pretty nasty integrals, but with after closer inspections, we can see a lot of things will fall out. <clears throat> There it is. Now we can see that our integrals have become a lot nicer. They are much friendlier and easier to solve. Here we can see I pushed them up a little bit so we can have some more room. And the first integral, second integral, third integral, no problem. Very easy to solve. And after we simplify a bit, we can rewrite the terms. The last two terms are the same. And here we go. Our yp is equal to one third t to the third e to the negative t. We have found our particular solution. So all that is left, write up our final solution, homogeneous plus particular. Here it is. Plug in the appropriate values that we have found. And we can see we found the solution with the variation of parameters method. Now, as a last step, let's compare the two undetermined coefficient method, variation of parameters method, both exactly the same. This can give us confidence that we did a good job and we didn't mess up somewhere. So there it is. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Please give it a thumbs up so other people can find it as well. And have a great day.